So the connection between war and reality is always political. You know, that's why artists, activists, they're always in a way define the politicians. Politicians want to def you know, define and describe world in particular terms. And artists, they bring in new knowledge. They bring you know, in new news from somewhere else and describe the reality in different ways. That's how, and when the, ch when the time change, when new description, new knowledge comes, you know, there's always some writer, somebody comes, some artist comes, and create a new language to describe this or capture this reality. You know, so, you know, like Celine was doing in French language, you know, he, you know, Henry Miller says that Celine jazzed up French language. What Jack Kerouac was doing with American English, you know, that changed, you know, what Bob Dylan, you know, when Bob Dylan wrote The Heart Rain Gonna Fall, Alan Ginsberg actually told me that uh, he changed uh, American poetry forever. You know, and I was just, you know, I'm going to tell a little anecdote. Alan Ginsberg uh, was coming to India, Bangladesh a lot. For the first time, Alan Ginsberg came to India in 1952, and before that, on his way, he was in Venice to meet Ezra Pound. And with him, and Ezra Pound was living in, in Venice at that point, with him, Alan Ginsberg took two records, one record uh, of Beatles, uh, and one record by Bob Dylan, and he played the records to Ezra Pound. You know, because Ezra Pound and William Carlos Williams were very important for, for uh, Ginsberg. And, um, he said, well, you know, he was saying that, do you see how language is changing? And uh, he said that, uh, and he actually wrote about in Evergreen Review, his uh, magazine, that uh, Ezra Pond was listening to, you know, the way you know, things were changing and he was listening to the music. So I think when new reality, new thought emerges, uh, you need a new language to talk about it. And for us, you know, everything is state controlled. The television, we have only one television channel, which is controlled by the state. And there is a certain way to describe the reality, you know? What the government head is doing, that's the only thing you see in, in reality. Like, I was telling Gerhard the other day that in 1946, in Germany, you know, Heinrich Bohr, Gunter Grass, uh, all these people, they created Group of 46. They <coughs> say that Adorno was saying too, Adorno said, when this atrocity happened in German language, how can you write poetry after that in this language? So in 1946, actually, they were saying that when Nazis created propaganda in this language, we have to save this language from the rubble and create a new language to create literature. Same, you know, every time, you know, every, every, in every era, time changes. You know, you need a new language to describe the reality. So it's not only me. There was a whole group of people through the whole 80s who were trying to create a new literary language that will describe our reality. But then I left. Um, things that progressed a little bit by the time. And probably it was not the right time. That's why it didn't happen. By the time I came back, by 2003, 2004, you know, everything was ready. And blog was right there. Government couldn't really control things anymore. You know, the intellectual, the intelligentsia couldn't really control things. It was ready to break open. And it was my big luck that I was there. And I could be the catalyst. And there were other people as well who have been there. You know, and they saw, saw me as an outsider coming and taking over their stuff. Uh, we had conflicts, a lot of conflicts, as you know, a lot of debates. But what, at the same time, we were having private TV channels. Before that, we didn't have private TV channels. So the moment they found a new language to create things that can sell, one thing we forget that you know, Che Guevara, when you put Che Guevara's face on a Ralph Lauren t-shirt, it sells for $200. You know, revolution is good business. You know, and, you know, Michael Moore is making a film, you know, about changing the system. It's been distributed by Miramax. It's good business. You know, revolution is always good business, and we forget that. So it was good business for them. So they pick up the language. They're making, you know, they're making play with it, and people loved it because it was describing their reality. They were, you know, they're tired of looking at these old, tired things, you know, all through decades and decades. So somehow the time was right, everything was right, and it worked. Um, so. Yeah, but now we're already uh, going very fast up to the, to the films, and mm -hmm. <laughs> because um, on the one hand you <laughs> were writing uh, a, um, the script for films as well as you are a producer and a film director as well. Yes. Uh, I think in, uh, in our era, area, or here in Europe, you are known for, for this uh, film you have shown in, in Cannes, yes, and yes. so on. We will, I think yeah. I will pass all that to okay. you. Okay, okay. And also with the other films, Guerrilla and, and uh, 
Mahajan. Mahajan. Mahajan uh, I pass on to you because okay. it's. Yeah, yeah. As far as I understood, yeah, as you said, your, your writings are more about a new language and to create an empowering space, maybe for for um, Bengali people and also Wilmawa for uh, Bengali people in the diaspora and so on. And your films, but mainly deal with uh, at least the three films we mainly will talk about. Mainly deal with brute violence, like physical violence, in the context of religious and nationalism. Of religious fundamentalism and nationalism, and so I want to know, like first, to get people to get the context of these three films, like you call them torture talkies. Like it's a one film is called Atro City Exhibition, which is like Ausstellung der Grausamkeit, which uh, like is like also a quote by a book of J. 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 I just know the song by Joy Division. Exactly, <laughs> a punk song, exactly. There's all these layers of meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is an atrocity exhibition, and then there's a second film called... Uh, Pornographia. Pornographia, and then the third one, Citizen of the Womb. Citizen of the Womb. Yes. And he, like, this is a trilogy, and like, he calls them torture talkies. And now I just want him to give you a bit, like, a context why they are called torture, talkies, and what is the connection between the films? Okay. I go a little back, yeah. so the context is full. And it's all it starts with a girl. Godard, Jean-Luc Godard says that if you have a gun and a girl, you can make a film. I believe in that, you know? So, um, I fell in love with a French girl in 2004. So, with my life, you know, I, I'm always starting from the zero, always, you know. So, uh, in 2004, I come back to Paris. So I live in, you know, I, we get married in six months and live in Paris in 2004 from Bangladesh. And all of a sudden, two of my friends, you know, they want me to produce a film. Uh, first, they, they approach me to write a screenplay because they know uh, I write screenplays. I was trained as a writer. Columbia I studied creative writing. Um, and I am, I should put it this way, you know, I mean, I write, I don't really make, as a writer, I don't really make a lot of money but I'm the highest paid screenplay writer in that region. So people approach me for writing screenplay a lot. So, but these were good friends, so I wrote a screenplay for them, then they wanted me to produce the film. This film is called Manager, and it was a high budget film. Uh, you probably know the Merchant Ivory film called uh, Passage to India. The star of Passage to India was working in this film, Victor Banerjee, who got nominated for Oscar. Uh, one of the legend of Bollywood, Jaya Bachchan, worked in that film. You know, Big massive film. So the experience of this film, and we researched a film that is based on true stories of Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971. Um, but the experience for me, you know, I in the middle of the producing the film, I wrote the screenplay, but in the middle of producing the film, I had to left. I had to leave because the experience wasn't good. What I wanted to do, I couldn't do. Then I got involved. I don't like to leave, you know, in the middle. Then I got involved in another big budget film. It's called Guerrilla. It's again about the liberation of Bangladesh. And I finished that project, and this gets um, the 10 national award, the highest national award country it gets. I get two award, national award. And this also gets uh, the best Asian film, NetPack award in Tokyo Film Festival and Calcutta Film Festival. So I finished that, but I realized that, you know, when we, I'm working within this structure, I could never really tell my stories. And what was happening here, by that time, you know, 9-11 happened, and South Asia was the focal point of war on terror policy. You know, 9-11 happened in 2001, but it took until 2004 to put the policy in place in South Asia. And all the foreign policy effort was changing. In Bangladesh, we have a special police force, it's called Rapid Action Battalion, and they were killing so-called Islamists in a way we call extrajudiciary killing. You know, they just pick them up and they take them somewhere and they shoot them. They don't put them through the judicial system. You know, and it was in, align in alignment with the war on terror policy. So this was happening. But since this apparatus was ready, the government was also using this brutal apparatus to silence the opposition. I will give one example. Uh, Bangladesh is one of the main textile exporters in the world, especially, you know, Northern Europe is buying, uh, Italy is one of 
second largest buyer of textile from Bangladesh in Europe. So a lot of you know places are buying textile from Bangladesh, and these are this you know and Bangladesh don't own those you know big factories. China own those factories. You know Turkey, Korea, they are put in a place. It's called special economic zone. None of the laws applies there, <laughs> and the uh, laborers, which are mostly women, they don't have the right to unionize. They cannot unionize. So there's fire every other you know month. People are dying. This that, but nobody can talk about rights. You know they cannot unionize. They have you know very low salary. Like they're working for two euro a month, three euro a month. You know, and they're working fourteen hours, eighteen hours a day shift. You know, there is no safety regulation in the factories, and all this is happening. So one of, I mean, we hear several times when accidents happen. Uh, you know, thirteen hundred people die. And we hear about it. Exactly. We call it. I call it disaster visibility. Yeah. Bangladesh is a country. When there is a disaster, it becomes visible in the media. You know, there's a flood. You hear Bangladesh. You know, there's an accident. You hear Bangladesh. Yeah. Anyways. But if, uh, for example, on the other hand, you told before from this uh, Rohingyas. Rohingya refugee. Yeah. That can we we don't hear about so this much. Yeah. So much. Uh, because this is uh, not very important. Minority or, or a group of people in living in Myanmar, I, I think so, and yeah. looking for their place or, or mm -hmm. moving and being migrants. It's not very yeah, consistent with European mm -hmm. foreign policy, so it's not important news. Yeah.